The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our Old Testament reading from Ezekiel 18. 18. We're looking at verses 25 to 32 today, where the Lord said, Yet you say the way of the Lord is not just. Here, O house of Israel, is my way unjust? Is it not your ways that are unjust? If a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits sin, he will die for it. Because of the sin he has committed, he will die. But if a wicked man turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he will save his life. Because he considers all the offenses he has committed and turns away from them, he will surely live, he will not die. Yet the house of Israel says the way of the Lord is not just. Are my ways unjust, O house of Israel? Is it not your ways that are unjust? Therefore, O house of Israel, I will judge you, each one according to his ways, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent, turn away from all your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone declares the Lord, Sovereign Lord, repent and live. My dear friends in Christ, unbelievers will always, in this life anyway, always ultimately accuse God of being unjust and unfair. And after this life, after this life, they might still like to accuse God of being unjust and unfair, but really they will only be able to say that, that he is just and fair because they're getting what they deserve. But in this life, because of their unbelief, they weren't able to see that God is just and fair. They couldn't recognize that. Well, the Lord said, yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear, O house of Israel, is my way unjust? Is it not your ways that are unjust? Well, the Lord here then describes two situations. The first, if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits sin, he will die for it. Because of the sin he has committed, he will die. The righteous person, as we heard yesterday, that's the person who is a believer but this believer, he turns away from Christ's righteousness. He rejects that righteousness. And because he turns away from it and rejects it, he loses Christ's righteousness. And, and because he loses Christ's righteousness, he's going to pay the wages of sin, which is death, eternal death. And now that person may accuse God of being unjust and unfair, but he's completely wrong. The unbeliever, he rejects God's grace. And because he rejects God's grace, he'll face eternal punishment. The unbeliever ultimately actually gets just what he has asked for. And that's not God's grace. He's rejected God's grace. But that's what he's asking for here, really. Not getting God's grace. Well, the second situation is this. If a wicked man turns away from his wickedness, he has committed and does what is just and right, he will save his life. Because he considers all the offenses he has committed and turns away from them, he will surely live. He will not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not just. Are my ways unjust, O house of Israel? Is it not your ways that are unjust? And again, as we heard yesterday, the wicked man who turns away from his wickedness, that's talking about the unbeliever who is, by the grace of God, called to faith in Jesus. The Holy Spirit works on his heart and he gives him the help and the strength that he needs to fight against sin and do, as it says here, what is just and right. 
the Holy Spirit has turned his life around and saves him from what he deserves. Because God doesn't give him what he deserves because of our sins, because God doesn't give us what we deserve because of our sins, we could say that God is unfair, but instead of saying that God is unfair, what we believers say is that, that God is gracious and loving. His grace and love, just absolutely amazing. Jesus, who had to pay for our sins for us, he's the only one that could kind of accuse God of being unfair because he had to pay for our sins, but, but he's not going to do that because he, together with God the Father and the God, the God the Holy Spirit, well, it's their plan. They were in that plan together to save us from our sins and to win for us salvation. Well, the Lord said, Therefore, O house of Israel, I will judge you, each one according to his ways, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent, turn from all your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? This is God's word working on the hearts of Ezekiel's listeners, including us. It's God the Holy Spirit working on our hearts so that we would, well, confess our sins, be sorry for our sins, look to Jesus for forgiveness, and then keep on looking to the Holy Spirit for his help to fight against the sin that's in our lives. This is God working in us so that we're blessed, so that we have, as he says here, a new heart and a new spirit. A new heart and a new spirit that wants to live for the Savior, wants to work for the spread of his kingdom. But why would we ever complain about this? Why would we ever be accusing God of being unjust and, affair, and unfair when all he's doing is everything that we need for our salvation? The Lord said, For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent and live. Here again is God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord, working on our hearts, working on our hearts so that we're blessed. And don't we just have to say to God, thank you for doing everything for us and for our salvation, and, and please keep on working on our hearts so that we would never reject God's grace. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for all you do for us. Thank you especially for not treating us as we deserve to be treated for our sins. Thank you for your amazing grace and love. Help us to never reject your grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.